This is the Unicota 16 gas-powered outdoor pizza oven. Uni claims it can reach a temperature of 932 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees Celsius and can cook a 16-inch pizza in 60 seconds. While we are no experts in making pizzas, I have a huge family and we make a lot of pizzas. But when it comes to cooking in these high temp ovens, there is a learning curve and mistakes were made. Before I get into this review, I need to tell you that Uni sent us this sample to test out, but of course I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Okay, so first thing, the Uni Coda 16 comes with the oven itself, the propane hose and regulator, a match holder in case the igniter doesn't light, and a 15 millimeter corduroy stone baking board that you will need to insert yourself. I like that this is replaceable as some ovens come with the stone built in. With the exception of the stone baking board, the oven is ready to go right out of the box. You simply unfold the legs and hook up your fuel. In this case, we're using propane. A natural gas conversion kit is available. According to the manual, you should inspect the valve connections and regulator. Remove any debris and inspect the hose for damage. Next, we turn on the gas, making sure the oven is off. Before lighting the oven, Uni states to check for gas leaks by using a soap and water mixture. Use one part soap and one part water and apply to the fittings. If there's a leak, you would see this mixture start to bubble. If any leaks are found, tighten the fitting. And if that doesn't fix it, turn off the gas, don't use it, and call customer service. To light the oven, make sure the control knob is off. Next, push in the control knob and slowly turn for three seconds until you hear a click and the burner ignites. Then hold for five more seconds after ignition. If the oven does not ignite, turn off the knob and wait five minutes before retrying. If the igniter fails, you can use a match. Wait five minutes for any gas to dissipate, insert a match into the match holder, light it, and place it next to the burner. Then follow the normal procedure. If it's not obvious, make sure you or anyone else does not stick their face around the opening while lighting, as gas does build up in the oven and could melt your face off. I ran the oven flat out on the highest setting for one hour and consumed approximately one and a half pounds of propane. After five hours of use on high and low, I used approximately five pounds. The Uni has an L-shaped flame, which should mean less turning compared to other pizza ovens. The Uni manual states, run your oven at the highest setting for 30 minutes to season it. This burns off any gobbledygook from the manufacturing process. Then let it cool down and wipe out the inside with a dry paper towel. The cool down period is one and a half hours. Uni recommends placing the oven on a sturdy stainless steel wood or stone surface capable of holding 66 pounds. Try to shelter it from the wind, but at least three feet away from any buildings or structures. Now let's crank this thing and see if we can reach that 932 degree Fahrenheit claim that Uni makes. High heat is the name of the game when it comes to pizza ovens, and without that extreme heat, you can't make Neapolitan style pizzas. Uni claims a preheat time of 20 minutes, so we'll test that too. The ambient temperature is 78 degrees on a near windless day. At about 23 minutes, we were at just about 700 degrees in the center. Even after running the oven for over an hour, I could not reach 932 degrees anywhere inside the oven. The hottest temps I got were at the back where the burner bends. But these temps are close enough and suitable for making a Neapolitan style pizza. With no built-in thermometer, I would highly recommend getting yourself an infrared thermometer. You definitely need to know and keep track of the temp in the oven. Different style pizzas have different temperature requirements. I'll leave a link in the description for a suitable thermometer. So in this review, we'll be cooking two different styles of pizzas, with two different dough types. We'll be using Uni's recipe for Neapolitan and New York style. I won't go into too much detail on making the dough, but real quick, Neapolitan style dough is made with only four ingredients, double zero flour, salt, water, and yeast. This is the dough you want to use when cooking at these extremely high temps. New York style and other dough types have oil and sometimes sugar in them, so they can burn at temps over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. For Neapolitan style pizzas, you need to use double zero flour. Caputo blue, as they call this flour, seems to be the gold standard for pizza dough. I found this giant bag at my local Italian import store, but you can also find it on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. I also picked up this airtight container for storage, cause we'll probably have this for a while. For New York style pizzas, you can use less expensive bread flour, but we'll be using this flour for both. Now, our dough handling skills are not the greatest, but nobody here cares what the pizza looks like as long as it tastes good. And you know, who says round is the best? Other shapes are good as well. Okay, so for the first test, Neapolitan style. I say style because Neapolitan pizzas have very strict guidelines. One of which is they need to be cooked in a wood-fired oven, of which this is not. They also need to be cooked within 60 to 90 seconds, so hopefully we can get close. 
So one of the very first hiccups you may encounter when first starting out making pizzas is the launch. It takes a little practice to get good. Some say perforated metal peels, some say wood peels. The perforated metal allows some of the flour to drop from the peel on launch, which is good because if you have too much flour on the bottom of the pizza, it could burn. Some people swear by wood for the launch and use metal to turn the pizza and retrieve it. It's not a bad idea to experiment with both. You can also get a turning peel to turn the pizza in the oven without removing it. For me, this uni wooden peel has turned out to be great, so I'm sticking with wood for the launch. It's important to make sure the pizza is moving on the peel before you launch. Do not launch the pizza if it is not moving freely. Uni has some great tips on their website for launching, but the gist is use a light dusting of flour on the peel, and if it's still sticking, you can do the hovercraft technique, which is lifting one side of the base and giving a gentle blow of air. I guess this blows the flour around to the sticky parts. If you still can't get it moving freely, I've got a tip coming up. Stay tuned. You also want to keep the toppings light. Too many toppings will weigh the dough down and make it harder to slide off the peel. So all in all, the Neapolitan pizzas were a success. We averaged under two minutes for every pizza, and I even baked one in 78 seconds. The uni dough tasted great and was a big hit with my family. How's the pizza, girls? Good. Good. What do you think? Mm. Except for the ball part. Except for the what part? The burn part. Oh, the burn part? I didn't achieve a 60 second pizza, nor just a one turn pizza, but that's probably because I can't help but fiddle a little bit. I'm totally happy with the results though. The New York style was good as well. I turned the oven down to the lowest setting to get a longer bake and averaged just under four minutes per pizza. The pizza was good, but I struggled to get a crispy base. I would prefer the base to cook a little longer, but if I did, I would burn the top. Okay, so Uni doesn't have a 16 inch pizza peel and I wanted to make a 16 inch pizza. So I got a few of these pizza screens to try out. This is probably sacrilege for the purist, but whatever, I'll take the hit in the comments. These are aluminum and they come shiny, but I seasoned them in the oven a few times with some pan grilling spray. I didn't do this here, but a good idea is to spray them with a little pan before you place the dough on them or they will stick a little. Launching these screens are a breeze and it allowed me to get a full 16 inch thin crust pizza in the oven. I would have liked a little crispier base, but that's to be expected I think when using a screen with an oven like this, since the dough is not making direct contact with the stone. Back to that tip about the pizza not sliding on the peel. If you try to launch a pizza that is sticking to the peel, you will undoubtedly end up with a half-baked calzone. I mean, you can still technically eat it. Instead, carefully remove the pizza from the peel and place it on the screen, then launch the screen. It's a great way to save a pizza that would have been otherwise ruined. I'll leave a link to the pizza screens I used in the description. Cleanup is pretty simple in these ovens. You just blast the heat and burn the crud off. I will say it gets cleaner in the hotter zones, and you might need to scrape with a grill brush around the opening. You can also pop out the stone when it's cooled down if you want to get a deeper clean. Final thoughts, this thing is an absolute unit. There's not a whole lot of ovens in this price range that can cook a 16 inch pizza. In fact, I couldn't find any for $500 that could. I might be wrong about that, so please feel free to comment if you know of one. Overall, I'm very happy with this oven, and I think we'll make some great memories making pizza together. I do recommend. That's it for this review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and all that stuff if you wanna see more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Was that good crust? It's really good, Dad. There you go. How was it, Bear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.